So, uh, w uh, what'd you say your name was? Billy! Oh, yeah. Take it easy, Bobby. It's Billy. I'm Billy. Enjoy this great game. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. This is Eric and today we're going to be talking about my 2022 unofficial ballot. If I were to have a vote, how I would vote for the Hall of Fame this year. Really tough decisions to be made as more and more names are getting added to the ballot and less and less names get into the Hall of Fame. And it's complete BS in my opinion, but that's how it is. What you see before you is not this year's ballot. If you're confused and looking at it like, wait, what the hell? This is last year's ballot, and this is from the video that I put up last year. So being completely transparent, I'm going to talk about my votes last year, who I wanted to get in, who I voted for, some names that I left off. Even last year, I had to leave some names off because you only get 10 names. There's a 10-name maximum, which is also complete crap, but that's the rules for the Hall of Fame election. By the way, shout out to Icy Blue 2525 for subscribing. That's my newest subscriber. So if you hit that subscribe button, you might get a shout out in the next video. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for all your support. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and you guys are absolutely awesome. So as you can see, last year I voted for Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Todd Helton, Andrew Jones, Jeff Kent, Andy Pettit, Scott Rowland, Kurt Schilling, Omar Vizquel, Billy Wagner. I don't really have any regrets over that ballot. I think that all 10 of them should get in and none of them got in. But there are also some names that I left off. Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa, Gary Sheffield, who I think should be in as well. But I decided to leave them off last year thinking that, you know, I had to leave off somebody. I decided to go with Andy Pettit. That was the one kind of, you know, borderline vote I wasn't sure about because I thought that he had a chance to get some traction. Turned out he really didn't. He had no chance. He's not even close. So he's the one guy I might change this year to try to get some more support for some of these other guys I just mentioned. But at the same time, you have even more guys now with Big Poppy on the ballot, with A-Rod on the ballot, and it's like, what the hell do you do? Big Poppy even has a failed steroid test in his history. So if he gets in and Bonds and Clemens don't, that's complete BS. I'm going to go on a complete rant. But then again, I also think that Big Poppy's a Hall of Famer. So it, it, it's just crazy and it makes for a really tough decision. Do I leave or tease off just this year kind of as a strategic thing to be able to vote for other guys and make sure that Bonds and Clemens get the most support they can in their last year on the ballot? Because obviously Ortiz is going to get in at some point. Something I had to consider very, very strongly. So let's jump into this year's ballot. Bobby Abreu had a great career. If you really research his career, you might be surprised. And I would actually give him some serious consideration if I had room on my ballot. Fact is, I just don't. There are too many guys who I think should absolutely be in. And Abreu is more of a, eh, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. So I'm going to pass on Abreu this year. Barry Bonds, um, he's only one of the best players to ever play baseball. Probably the best hitter of all time. Okay, a dude who could run, who could steal bases, who could play defense. 400 steals, 400 home runs, even if he never touched steroids. Barry Bonds is one of the greatest. That's because you're a Giants fan. Please stop. Everybody knows who is being honest with themselves that Barry Bonds is one of the best players to ever play the game. And he is on my freaking ballot. Mark Burley had a really nice career, really solid. Another kind of case similar to Abreu where, you know, I would kind of give him consideration, but... Just don't have room for a guy who I'm not sure about. I just don't have room for him. Roger Clemens, uh, yeah, one of the best pitchers to ever pitch. Clear-cut 100% Hall of Famer before he ever touched steroids. Roger Clemens should have been in, and he is getting my vote. Um, Carl Crawford, love Carl Crawford. Uh, doesn't quite have the stats, you know, as far as a, an entire career. And same for Prince Fielder. Unfortunately, if he didn't have that, you know, neck injury, he might have been a Hall of Famer, but he just didn't have time to really accumulate the stats. Moving on to Todd Helton, I think for some reason a lot of voters don't vote for Helton because he played in Denver, which is absolutely insane. Now with Larry Walker getting in, hopefully a lot of them will put that to rest. The fact is Todd Helton was amazing on both sides of the ball. Great fielder, won like three gold gloves, made a whole bunch of all-star teams, hit a bunch of home runs, had over 2,500 hits, just an absolutely fantastic career. In my opinion, Todd Helton is a Hall of Famer. He gets my vote. 
That's three already. I only have room for seven more. Look, Ryan Howard, huge fan of Ryan Howard. I love that he you know, kept on trying to extend his career as long as possible, even played in the minor leagues last couple of years. He was awesome in the late 2000s. But again, just not room on my ballot. Just not room on my ballot. Again, I, I would give him more consideration. I give him some consideration, but there are too many names. You only get 10. I can't vote for him. Uh, Torrey Hunter, similar situation. Very nice career. Very solid career. He's, he's getting close to borderline. He's getting close to giving really serious consideration to, but I didn't have room on the, my ballot for him, but I do have room for the next guy. Andrew Jones, I feel like was so awesome for so long. And I really feel like if those five, you know, four or five years where he was injury prone, where he didn't do much at the end of his career, if that was how he started his career, if he had four or five rough years and then he did what he did for like a 10 year stretch, if he did that to end his career, he'd be in already. He'd be in, but voters just vote with emotions. They're like, ah, Andrew Jones, ah, he's, car he's crap. He's been hurt for five years. Dude, screw that last five years. He was a 10-time gold glover, and he hit over 400 home runs. Repeat, 10-time gold glover, 400-plus home runs. He got the Player of the Year award and almost got the MVP if it wasn't for a young and ridiculously amazing Albert Pujols. He even stole 150 bases. I mean, the dude was just amazing. How the hell is Andrew Jones not in on his first year on the ballot? I, I This is my most confusing uh, of all of these cases. And uh, if you can't already tell, yeah, I think uh, Andrew Jones will go ahead and get my vote. Um, so let's move on. Now, Jeff Kent, I, I don't know what the problem is. Voters have historically voted for guys based on their positions. If a second baseman is amazing, like Ryan Sandberg at his position, that person gets in based on comparing him to other second basemen. That stopped with Jeff Kent. All of a sudden, ah, Jeff Kent, screw him. Why, why the hell y'all don't like Jeff Kent? 377 home runs, more than any other second, more than Rogers Hornsby, more than Ryan Sandberg, more than Joe Morgan. The dude was fantastic. Defensively, all oh, but the advanced metrics. His advanced defensive metrics maybe aren't the best, but you don't play second base for that many years if you just stink. From a fan's perspective, we always thought back in the day that Jeff Kent was awesome. He would make so many great diving plays. He would make the routine plays. Apparently, advanced analytics show that he wasn't as great defensively as we remember. Sure, I, I can accept that. Still a Hall of Famer. He even has an MVP. Oh, but a guy never won an MVP. Well, Jeff Kent won an MVP, and he was teammates with Barry Bonds when he won it in 2000. He's got an MVP. So if that doesn't put him over the top, I don't know what does. So I'm voting for Jeff Kent. Tim Lincecum is a super interesting case. He deserves his own video, breaking down his career and talking about whether he's Hall of Fame worthy or not. But at the end of the day, even if I think he's in... I can't really vote for him because, again, of that 10-name limit, there are too many other names who are definite, surefire Hall of Famers, and I just can't vote for Tim Lincecum. But the dude threw two no-hitters. The dude, not only that, he got more important, he won two Cy Young Awards, and he was just amazing. I mean, you talk about a, a flame, you know, here and gone, but when he was good, he was absolutely tremendous. But he just wasn't great long enough, and his career stats aren't big enough, and I think he falls a little bit short. But, you know, three-time World Series champion, Tim Lincecum, absolute Giants legend, as is, I can't vote for Tim Lincecum. Traitor! Justin Morneau is another interesting case. This is a guy who, kind of similar to Andrew Jones, was really good, was awesome. And then he had just a whole bunch of years where he wasn't that great. And he looked like he was on the Hall of Fame track. The difference, though, is he doesn't have 10 gold gloves. He doesn't have anything like that. I mean, he was really good. He has an MVP. But... Other than that, Justin Morneau did not, was not as great as Andrew Jones was for a 10-year stretch, in my opinion. So, although I, I really like Justin Morneau, I think it, he falls a little bit short, in my opinion. Joe Nathan obviously started his career as a Giant, ended his career as a Giant. So, I love Joe Nathan. Unfortunately, the Giants traded him to the Twins, where, you know, he had his glory years. Awesome closer for a long time. 350-plus saves, a whole bunch of all-star selections. To be quite honest, Joe Nathan, I think he should be in. So you're like, bro, then go ahead and check mark him. I'm not going to check mark him because I only get 10 names. 
and he is in his first year on the ballot. So I'll have lots of years to vote for him when some of these guys fall off the ballot, which Bonds, Clemens are about to do, and Schilling and Sosa are about to do. That's four names freed up for next year. Of course, more guys are going to show up, so it just sucks. But I feel like Joe Nathan, when you look at the other closers who are in, it's borderline. But I think that he deserves a vote. For this year anyway, it wasn't quite great enough to make me not vote for the 10 guys that I'm going to vote for. But I feel like Joe Nathan is a Hall of Famer. Um, it's certainly not a you know open and shut case, I think. And, and he's, he may never get in. I really don't know. But uh, I'm going to have to leave him off for this year. David Ortiz is the most fascinating case on here. And amazingly, I had to really wrestle with this because I think David Ortiz is an absolute Hall of Famer. But I also think he's absolutely going to get in. Maybe even this year. David Ortiz is going to get in. Period. So, he doesn't really need my help. Who needs my help, if I was a voter, I should say, would be Bonds, Clemens, Helton, Kent, Jones. Later on, some of these other guys that I'm going to vote for, they need my help. Ortiz, he's getting in. Now, obviously, if Ortiz was did not have that failed steroid test on his record, I would vote for him. I would just vote for him because he's, he's a 100% absolute definite Hall of Famer. But the fact that he has that... And the fact that everyone's voting for him anyway, I think it's just BS. I do not want to see him get in and Bonds and Clemens left out. I don't want to see that. He has a failed steroid test. I know it was not supposed to be out there. It was supposed to be confidential. Guess what? It wasn't confidential. It got out there. Just because something's supposed to be confidential doesn't mean now that we know that we just ignore it. I'm going to strategically leave off David Ortiz for this year only. Next year, if he is not in this year, he will be on my ballot next year. Jonathan Papelbon comes up next, another really good closer, 300 plus saves, great career, great ERA, and uh, another guy like Joe Nathan, who I think it's not stupid to vote for him. I think that he should get Hall of Fame support. There just ain't room on my ballot. Just ain't room right now. Jake Peavy, who won a Cy Young, at least one, I remember that, uh, with the Padres, was it, 2007-ish, um, and uh, was also a giant for a long time, and Jake Peavy's awesome, um, but unfortunately, I don't think he quite gets in. Uh, I'm not going to vote for PV, uh, but I'm a huge fan. Love PV. He seems like a really good guy, too. Andy Pettit is a tough one. He was on my ballot last year. He had an insane career. Uh, so much postseason experience. So many wins. 250-plus wins. Going to push him 300 wins. And he had a great career. And I think that he should be in. But he does have a little PV link where he admitted to using PVs. And if I'm not voting for David Ortiz this year... You know, and, you know, Pettit last year, I decided to put him in because I thought he actually had a better chance than guys like Sosa. Um, it turned out he didn't. He had like 11% of the vote. So it turned out that he's not even close. It looks like he's not going to get in. He's not trending much better this year. Um, so I decided that that was probably not the best vote from a strategic point of view last year. I think he's a Hall of Famer, but I'm going to leave Pettit off this year and uh, give my vote to some of these other guys who I think should be in. So let's move on. AJ Przinsky played for a long time, really good solid catcher, played with the Giants, but didn't have a great uh, stint with the Giants. I don't think he, he was uh, got along with the other players. I don't remember, but AJ Przinsky didn't fit in well in the Giants clubhouse. But I don't think he quite has the overall career stats to merit election at this point. So we'll move on. Manny Ramirez. Manny being Manny, baby. This guy was absolutely tremendous. Obviously, 555 home runs, super entertaining. He did fail some steroid tests. He's very controversial. Wasn't always the best teammate, it seems, from, you know, at least from stories and things like that. So ultimately, you know, I think that Manny is a Hall of Famer, but you only get 10 names. This is one that I decided to pass on. Part of the problem is the arrival of freaking A-Rod. Three MVPs, 14-time All-Star. The dude nearly has 700 home runs. A-Rod would have hit 700. Uh, if he didn't get himself suspended a couple times, and obviously that's the uh, that's the downside to voting for A-Rod, but to me, Alex Rodriguez, one of the greatest of all time. If he didn't do ever do steroids or, or PEDs, I think he was, still would have been a Hall of Famer. He had that kind of talent. It's unfortunate that there are so many you know controversial names on this ballot. It's not great for baseball, but it is what it is. I think that Alex Rodriguez just was that great. Should I pass on him like I did Ortiz? You could say that, but I think that A-Rod was just... He's just A-Rod, and he's just that great. He's just absolutely amazing. And should A-Rod get in and Bonds and Clemens is not, I'd still be pissed. But the fact of the matter is A-Rod's not getting in. A-Rod has no chance. You can see how he's trending. It's David Ortiz who's getting all the votes. So 
you know, for me, Alex Rodriguez, he's just, he was just too great, um, too amazing to not vote for. I know people are gonna bitch like, dude, how are you gonna fucking vote for A-Rod and not uh, Ortiz? But again, it comes down to a strategy thing. David Ortiz is trending too well right now. I don't think he should get in and Bonds and Clements not get in. A-Rod is not trending well. He's not gonna get in. He has less of a chance than even Bonds and Clemens to get in, so A-Rod has no chance. Now, I could give his vote to someone else who I've talked about, but fact of the matter, they're trending even worse, all these other guys. So, you know, you got to vote for someone. I'm, I got to fill in 10 names, and ultimately I decided that A-Rod is going to get my vote. Sorry, A-Rod gets my vote. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, but so does Mr. Scott Rowland. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Scott Rowland gets my vote as well. The dude was freaking outstanding on both sides of the ball. 300 plus home runs, made a whole bunch of all-star teams. How many gold gloves did he win? Eight gold gloves? The dude was absolutely fantastic. How is Scott Rowland not getting more support? I don't understand it. You know, a similar case to Andrew Jones, just awesome on both sides of the ball for a long time. Okay, he had some injury problems later in his career. Okay, so what? Dude was absolutely phenomenal. So, you know, Scott Rowland is gonna get my vote, period. It's such bullshit because you have guys who didn't do steroids, like Fred McGriff, who could never get in, Andrew Jones, Scott Rowland, Jeff Ken, can't get any traction, can't get in, amazing careers, can't get in. Oh, but if you did steroids, then you can't get in. Bonds, Clemens, no chance. What, what do they want? Guys like Kent and Jones got to be thinking, you know, and Rowland got to be thinking like, shit, I might as well have done steroids, gone out there and hit 600 home runs, why not? Can't get in anyway. I mean, that's not entirely true. I know they're probably not thinking that because they're proud of their careers and, you know, they didn't want to cheat. They didn't want to use steroids and that's awesome, but they're not getting rewarded for it. So it just pisses me off. Um, Jimmy Rollins! But not our Jimmy. Couldn't be precious Jimmy. Rollins had maybe a better career than you might remember. He even won an MVP, had over 400 steals, over 200 home runs, a very solid career. Just falls a little short, in my opinion, of the Hall of Fame. Kurt Schilling is a dude who should have been in a long time ago. It looks like he's not going to get in at all. He hasn't helped himself. You know, I, I'm all for, you know, freedom of speech and saying whatever you want and whatever you believe. And uh, I don't have any problem with that. And I'm still going to vote for you just because of things you said. How you, you know? But unfortunately, that's not how most of the writers feel, or at least a lot of the writers feel. Uh, they don't like you. They won't vote for you. I'm voting for his career. And he's a Hall of Famer, mainly for his postseason, absolutely stunning, amazing postseason career, but also a very solid regular season career. Uh, Kurt Schilling gets my vote. Boom. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the end, though, and then we'll go back to Sheffield instead of going in order because there's a guy who I just have to vote for. And part of it is that he's running out of time on the ballot. But another part of it is I think that he's even a stronger case than guys like Joe Nathan and Jonathan Palabon. I think he is the next reliever who needs to be in. And it's Billy freaking Wagner. What is going on? Why can't Billy Wagner get no support? Billy Wagner. Billy. Dude, is a seven-time All-Star. The dude has an ERA of like 2.3 career. 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 This dude's career stats compared to Mariano Rivera. They freaking compare, and a lot of them are better. I'm not saying he was better than Mariano Rivera, but a lot of his stats are. They just are. The numbers don't lie. Okay, he wasn't great in the postseason. I I I can see that. He didn't have a ton of postseason experience. He didn't have a million, you know, postseason innings I'm being sarcastic, but he didn't have as much postseason experience as somebody like Mariano Rivera who played for the Yankees. So, I mean, I'm not going to hold him against him that much that he didn't play for teams that made the postseason every year. He had a few opportunities. He didn't pitch well. I'm not going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame for that when he had a clear-cut Hall of Fame career. He's one of the best relievers to ever pitch. Billy Wagner, 400-plus saves. What, what's the problem, guys? Billy Wagner should be in. He's getting my vote. And now for the toughest decision of my ballot, and I've just been wrestling with it. Um... And it's amazing. You'd think that, it, you know, I'd have room now. I didn't even vote for Ortiz. You know, I, I didn't vote for Manny. So I got to have room, right? There shouldn't be more than one, you know, one or two Hall of Famers left. But to me, Gary Sheffield, Sammy Sosa, Omar Vizquel, I, I would like to checkmark all three of them. And I can't. I can only checkmark one. As far as Mark Teixeira goes, he's getting like no support. He's going to fall off the ballot. I find that insane. 
he had a damn good career. Teixeira hit over 400 bombs. He won like five gold gloves. He was a multi-time. I don't know how many all-star. Maybe maybe he didn't make enough all-star teams. Maybe he just didn't, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I do kind of know because I'm not voting for him. But I thought he'd at least get 5%. If you told me to guess, Mark Teixeira, I'd say, oh, he'd probably be around, you know, 9, 10%. Uh, no, he's like at point something last I checked. Not even 1%. He's fallen off. It's just kind of sad, but part of the problem is that no one can get in. So a lot of voters just don't have room for him. And uh, yeah, for me, I, I think I probably would not vote for him even if I had room, but I would certainly consider it a little more. But to share a falls a little short. And that brings us to these three names, Sheffield, Sosa, Vizquel. Oh my God. This was a tough one because Omar Vizquel, I've even made a video on Omar Vizquel being a Hall of Famer. I believe Omar Vizquel should be in. I think he had an amazing career. I think his career is very similar to that of Ozzie Smith's. And Ozzie Smith was a first-time no-brainer Hall of Famer. So I just don't get it. I mean, Vizquel, some of his stats are even better. Unfortunately, there's been these accusations as of late, which just completely crashed as far as his percentage. And he has absolutely zero chance to get in. Omar Vizquel has no traction. He still has some time left on the ballot. So I'm going to strategically hold off on Omar Vizquel this year. Uh, I do think he should get in, but you only get 10 votes. And so it's between Sheffield and Sosa. And I think Sheffield was awesome. Hitting 500 plus home runs. He was great. And I think he should be in. But Sammy Sosa being that it is last year on the ballot. A dude who hit at least 50 bombs four straight years with three of those years at least 60. Mind blowing. I know he was probably getting some help. Okay. But he hit over 600 home runs. Sammy Sosa was just a huge name for so long, and uh, he had an amazing career, and it's his last year on the ballot, and I have one more vote to go around. Nobody who's unchecked right now is getting in. None of them are. I could give this next vote to AJ Brzezinski. It doesn't matter. I am going to give my last vote to Sammy Say It Ain't Sosa. And there you have it, guys. That is my ballot right there. We will go ahead and sign the puppy, okay? There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the ballot for me this year. And as you can see, uh, it's Bonds, Clements, Helton, Jones, Kent, A-Rod, Roland, Schilling, Sosa, Wagner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is my ballot for 2022. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys for all your support. Shout out to Romo2001 for the donations. And shout out to Icy Blue 2525 Hit that subscribe button. You might get a shout out in the next video. Let me know what you think of my ballot. Let me know your ballot down below, where you agree, where you disagree. Cuss me out in the comment section down below. That's what it's there for. And I'll talk to you guys next time. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle Park.